Yo, what's up, Bears fans? Happy Monday morning. I was going to record this after the game uh, last afternoon, but I figured I'd cool down a little bit emotionally after that game so I can speak more objectively rather than just emotionally because, man, that game got me fired up and got me really sad at the same time because, I mean, I have not seen a game like that ever where you go from, like, down 10 points and making that insane comeback to still blowing it. And with all the other things that happened, you know, Akeem Hicks rushing touchdown, the pick six on the second play of the game, um, all those trick plays like Odell's 50-yard touchdown pass, Tariq Cohen's pass to tie it up. That game, if you could sum it up in one word, it was wild. It was absolutely freaking wild. And that game was why I love watching the NFL. Now, obviously, I was not happy at the end result because... The Bears lost, but you cannot say that they did not make this game interesting. That's one thing I love about the Bears. They make every single game interesting somehow. There's not been a single game this year where I've been bored out of my mind because we're getting blown out. We always fight to the end. We always come back. So props to the Bears for actually trying to come back. But yeah, that was a pretty terrible loss. Before I talk about the bad parts about this game, because obviously there are more bad parts than there were good parts, I want to talk a little bit about that insane comeback because you cannot discuss this game without talking about the insane comeback. And man, that comeback was why I truly believe that this team is special. Like any other Bears teams in the past, you know, five, six, maybe 10 years, I don't think they would have had enough to come back from 10 points, you know, in the last two minutes. You know, it's funny because when Taylor Gabriel fumbled that ball, I was watching in my college apartment and I was about to head out then because I thought that, you know, we're going to lose the game because obviously we're down seven points. They have the ball now at our end zone and time's almost running out. So I figured I'd go to the library then to study, you know, screw the game. I I was mad at that point. So I was getting ready, getting packed up. But then at the last second before I was about to leave, I figured like, why not just check my phone to see what the score is just in case we somehow made something crazy happen. And I, I saw that they're about to you know, kick the field goal. So I was like, why not just watch the field goal to see if they block it somehow. But obviously they make it. And then I figured we actually lost. But I still kept on watching because I was like, eh, why not? If I turn the TV on, why not just keep on watching? So I kept on watching and, you know, crazy things happened. Daniel completes that crazy pass to Tariq Cohen, uh, which that was absolutely a touchdown. Like, I don't know what the refs were seeing there, but they were completely inept throughout you know a large portion of this game and they should not have blown that play that that was a touchdown but we still got a you know field goal out of that and then when we somehow recovered the onside kick that was when I freaking just lost it because then I knew that we actually had a chance to come back so you know we get the onside kick then we drive down the field and score a touchdown on Tariq Cohen's crazy you know trick play to Anthony Miller and at that point, man, that was when I just started like yelling at the top of my lungs, probably woke up my roommates, woke up half the apartment complex, but who cares? And so I was really excited, but then obviously we still blow the game in the end. And it was a really sad ending to a very exciting, very entertaining comeback. But the final result was an L. Let's talk a little bit about why we lost this game and... Guys, the number one reason why we lost yesterday was Chase Daniel. Yeah, there were other reasons as well. Like, our defense was not nearly at its best. Matt Nagy did not have his best day coaching. He made some questionable calls. And the referees obviously were not on our side most of the game. But I'm not going to blame the refs for this one because we still should have won despite them. But the number one reason why we lost, again, was Chase Daniel. I am 100% sure that if Trubisky started this game, we would have won. Because Chase Daniel did some things that Trubisky simply does not do. Um, You look at the sacks that he took. Chase Daniel took five sacks in this game. He has nine sacks in his last two games, when Trubisky only had nine sacks in his last six games. So, and you cannot, this is not something that you can blame only on the offensive line. Yeah, maybe the offensive line was a little bit better blocking for Trubisky, but... There's, it's Chase Daniels' complete lack of mobility that's led to a lot of these sacks. Like, he is completely inept at escaping pressure. He cannot even, a lot of times he doesn't even throw the ball away. 
which I don't understand that at all. Just throw the ball away if you're taking, if you're about to take a sack. So that was very bad of him to take five sacks in this one, you know, especially against a Giants defense that I guess I underrated them a little bit, but they're still not a dominant defense by any means. Uh, so that was bad. He lost, or he committed four fumbles. He lost one of them. Uh, he had three fumbles, I think, on one drive in overtime, which that's just inexcusable. I mean, that's very bad. Uh, he had two picks, obviously the one pick six to put us down 7-0 early. So overall, Chase Daniel just had an absolutely terrible day. Uh, if I had to give him a grade, I'd probably give him an F or maybe a D- minus because, you know, just a week after that pretty good showing against the Lions, he comes out and does this against the Giants in a game that, you know, we really should win because we're still trying to keep... We haven't won the division yet. We still have to win, you know, more games. And for Chase Daniel to come out and do this, he just looked completely pedestrian, missing so many wide-open players, underthrowing so many people. And he did not look like an NFL quarterback yesterday. So, Chase Daniel, hopefully he doesn't have to start for us again. And, um, I don't know, man. It was very disappointing, to say the least. Obviously, Chase Daniel was not the only reason why we lost that game. Uh, there were other reasons as well. One of them being Matt Nagy's coaching. Look, I love Matt Nagy as a head coach. He's done an extraordinary job with this team, turning this organization around. You know, with his creativity on offense, his amazing culture that he's fostered. He's just an amazing coach, and he should still be coach of the year. But this game was just a very bad game for him coaching-wise because he made one inexcusable mistake throughout this entire game. That mistake was not committing to the run. Look, in the first half, Jordan Howard was completely dominating the Giants' defense, just running over people, just plowing through people, and... They could not stop us on the ground. Like, that was how we got our first touchdown. That was how we got our offense finally rolling because Chase Daniel could not get anything going through the air. But the ground game was working. So what does Matt Nagy do in the second half? He gives Jordan Howard two carries. That makes absolutely no sense. And again, I love you, Matt Nagy, but you're trying to be a little bit too creative sometimes for your own good. This was just a case where Matt Nagy found a way to beat a team, but... He tried to outsmart them further by, you know, passing the ball with Chase Daniel. And that's not going to work because Chase Daniel was not really having a good game. So I think he trusted Chase Daniel a little bit too much in this one. He should not have done that. He should have just given it to Jordan Howard more and we probably maybe would have won this game. He also made one more mistake, which was at the end of the first half where he called that timeout with like 18 seconds left to give the Giants a field goal. Now, I don't blame him fully for that one because I think he was just trying to get the ball back. But if you're trying to get the ball back in that situation, why not call the timeout earlier? Like, he let the clock run down for like 20 seconds before he called the timeout. Which, at that point, it didn't really make sense to call the timeout. So, Matt Nagy, it was not your best day coaching, but you're going to bounce back, obviously. You're still a phenomenal head coach. But today, our last game was not very good at all. Now let's talk a little bit about the last reason why we lost, which is our defense. Our defense is still, I think, the number one in the league, but it did not have a good day today at all. I mean, yeah, in the first half, they were very dominant. But after Saquon's Barkley, Saquon Barkley's run in the second quarter to end the first half, which set up their field goal, I think something just switched there because then they just stopped being dominant. Like, they're allowing Saquon Barkley, they're allowing Eli Manning to just chew them up and... I didn't really expect that. That was really, you know, bad of them because the Giants were putting together a lot of, you know, long sustaining drives and we did not our defense did not really give our chance give chances to our offense to, you know, have the ball. Like in the second half, time of possession was clearly favored by the Giants. So this was a bad game for our defense, but they'll obviously bounce back. So that pretty much wraps up the video. There were some positives to take away from this game, obviously, because we made that insane comeback. Some players had a good game, like Tariq Cohen had an extraordinary game. I loved Akeem Hicks rushing touchdown, Fridge 2.0. But overall, this was a game to forget for the Chicago Bears because we blew a game that we should have won easily. And everyone else in the division lost too, though, like the Vikings, Packers. How did the Packers lose to the Cardinals? That's freaking pathetic. And the Lions lost as well, so... It's not like we really, this loss really hurt us that much, but we could have 
you know, gained another step forward in this division, but we failed to do so. Now, Bears fans, don't give up on this team. I've seen a lot of people thinking that we're not going to win the division now because of this one loss. And that is simply not the case. We were missing our starting quarterback. For any team without their starting quarterback, it's really hard to win football games, even against bad teams sometimes. And this was just an uncharacteristically bad day for our defense, for our coaching staff. But the next game, next Sunday night, on Sunday Night Football against the Los Angeles Rams, the best team in the NFL, if we go out there and beat that team on primetime, which we will, we're going to make everyone forget about this game. Bear down.